How about you? I'm going to read that number. I hope I'm going to read that number. 82951781. Got it again. Okay, here we go. Five more. Okay, 15, can you hold this? You check me, I'm gonna read that number, you ready? Okay. One, three, nine, six, uh, seven, four, eight, eight, zero. Correct? Oh, zero, one? I'm sorry, zero, one. Is it zero, one? Yeah, that's right, I'm sorry. I'll read it again, one, three, Nine six seven four eight eight zero one. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sir. When it breaks, where's your logic probe? Ah, this is it. This is our logic probe. This is the way. It works. Now, just for those that remember the high school algebra, if you want to look at this blackboard real quickly, I'll explain how finite differences work. I'm going to take a very simple mathematical example. This is the equation R result equals x squared plus 1. Very simple, second order polynomial. If I plug in the value of x equals 1, you can easily see the result here is going to be 1 plus 1 or 2. If I plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, and if I use 3, it's 9 plus 1 is 10. So those are the first three solutions I manually, okay? Now I subtract 10 minus 5 is 5. That goes in this difference column. 5 minus 2 is 3 goes in this difference column. That's the first difference. Second difference is 5 minus 3, 2. 7 minus 5, 2. So you can see that the second difference column is a constant 2. So it depends on this number that the nth difference column here will be a constant. From now on, I only have to add. I want to know the solution for x equals 4. I go 2 and 7 is 9. No, excuse me, 2 and 5 is 7. 7 and 10 is 17. If I want the solution for x equals 5, 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 and 17 is 26. I just have to keep adding. That's all the machine does. The same would work for a third order polynomial if you want to look at this for a minute. You'll see the third column is a constant. But if I wanted the next value of <coughs> the next successive value here of x, I would just have to add 6, 26, and so on, and just add it for us. Okay? All right, we'll do a little more, little more time, time here and then we'll uh, keep it. Hmm? Is what? Yes, the one? Yes, this is the equation we're solving right now. Now, by the way, it's fortunate that Babbage even drew his own timing diagram for this machine, and it's very similar to the kinds of drawings you design when you're designing a real computer today. Getting the time, what they use vertical sort of. It shows you at every stage of this machine what state it has to be in, which has helped us very much to get the thing tuned up and to fix it when it breaks. And now we're up to 20. How often do you replace parts? Well, so far we've, we've got a, a broken part in here, which isn't involved in this calculation, but. Um, 
we have spare parts for the carry levers and some of the more fragile parts, but so far we haven't had to do a major. We have repair. to replace that one because we've got to tear apart the whole machine and do it, and then it takes a couple yeah. of days to get it all back in tune right away. We don't want to stop demonstrating it. Yeah. We had a particularly difficult time because Babbage, I don't know what was the matter with him, but he didn't foresee that this would travel on a 747. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he thought of everything else, uh, but he didn't foresee that. So when it arrived from England, we had a heck of a time getting it uh, realigned and tuned up, etc. A lot of screws had fallen out because back those days they were very, screw threads were kind of coarse and you didn't have anything like Loctite and stuff to keep them in. So it was a, it was a mess. And we have, of course, we lubricate it regularly. There's a maintenance crew. <laughs> I appreciate your attention. If you have more questions, we'll be around here a few minutes. I don't think so. I think that would probably be dangerous. Yeah, the thing is, Whoops. The, the force required of is, is variable throughout the cycle, depending on what's going on in the machine, according to that timing diagram. And you've got to keep it at a constant rate. You go too slow, to the jam. You go too fast, to the jam. So uh, the steam engine could do that, but it, it, it would be hard for it to feel that, that the force is changing inappropriately. Uh, our brains are better than machines at that. So right now, we best part of that is the value of the So Does it depend on the... Actually, it does have a little effect on how far into the That gives us all. Oh, really?